So in this question, we're dealing with, again, a relativistic motion. And in this case, what we're interested in, in is, is what is the relativistic momentum of a proton traveling in the LHC or the Large Hadron Collider. And so these protons collide and allow us to determine the fundamental nature of matter. And that's how the Higgs boson was discovered in 2012. Now, we're told that these protons are moving at a high speed. Now, the velocity of our protons is 99.99999 one the percent of the speed of light. Okay, so that's actually the speed that they're traveling at. The way I remember it is I need six nines and a one at the end. We're also needing to know the mass of our proton and the mass of our proton is 1.673 by 10 to the power of negative 27 kilograms. And now what we're asked to work out is, well, what is its momentum? Well, its momentum is relativistic. That is, because of the fact that it's moving at relativistic speeds, the momentum that the particle has from our frame of reference is equal to the momentum that the particle has from its frame of reference divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now, I know some of you are thinking, well, that's pretty easy. That means basically, and yes, it is partly true, that if we look at this from a mass perspective, then what we have is mv is equal to m naught v over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So you could say, oh look, the mass is actually increasing because the v's are the same value. But you've got to be careful here. The momentum is the thing that dilates. The actual mass of the particle does not dilate. But mathematically, it seems to appear to do so. But that's actually not what's happening. So that's why we always refer really to momentum dilation as opposed to mass dilation, because the actual mass isn't changing. But at least in terms of the numerics, we can set it out like this. And of course, we're interested in this total value. So as a result, we can now substitute things in. So now to work out our momentum is equal to the mass of my proton, which is 1.673 by 10 to the power of negative 27, multiplied by the speed, which is we know is 0.9999991 multiplied by C. And I'm not going to put C here for the moment because you know that's the speed of light over the square root of one minus, now it's v squared over c squared, right? So it's this value all squared. So the c squares actually cancel out. So I might as well just go 0 0.9999991 all squared. When I calculate that out, I'm going to get a value of 3.74 by 10 to the power of negative 16 Newton seconds. And of course that could be kilogram meters per second as well. Now, that doesn't seem a lot, but if I were to tell you what the momentum is without allowing for any relativistic effects, I'm going to get a value of 5.02 by 10 to the power of negative 19 Newton seconds. Now, that means this value here is 745 times greater so in its collision with other protons, there's a far a lot more energy in the system when they collide. And that's critical for the workings of the LHC. In any case, I hope that's helped you understand the concept of momentum dilations. Please like, share and subscribe. Check out my video where I look at the physics of the particle accelerators at CERN. That hope maybe will give you a little bit more context there. In any case, my name is Paul from High School Physics Explained. Take care. Bye for now.